we're going to be making bibs for babies <laughs> i don't make bibs often or anything for babies um but it's been requested and i thought well, hey you know what let's do it so i'm using a towel and woven fabric for the first bib i'm doing two two bibs same style but with two types of fabric and because i don't have a stretch terry that's a toweling so we call it a terry cloth i don't have any stretch fabric i've got a stretch patterned which uh, is quite cute and a stretched um, cotton here as well and knit so these are knitted fabrics they stretch these are woven even though that's looped actually but they don't stretch but they will stretch when they're on the diagonal and we're making these triangular actually right so we're going to start with a measurement of 17 inches that's going to be how wide the finished bib is going to be not how wide i need to allow so i've got a bigger piece of paper because i need to allow seam allowances we'll work that out in a moment a 17 line there what's that in centimeters you're asking me is about 43 centimeters all right and then by the time i add seam allowances it'll be about 45 the bib itself comes down six inches so i'm going to lay that rule along the straight and i'm going to mark it at six inches down there okay so let's join these lines here and it literally is as hard as that i've just drawn a triangle and that's your bib but we need to allow for seam allowances we tend to use one centimeter so grab your ruler and mark one centimeter around the whole of the triangle like that and join the dots and one centimeter is a quarter of an inch meter allow an extra one centimeter along that side there and I'm going to draw a straight line. I'm going to get the shape like that. Okay. It really is as easy as that. So Pre-wash all your fabric so it's not filthy and it's shrunk to size. Okay. So because of the different types of fabric we're using here, I'm going to cut them individually. I'm going to just shimmy that fabric across so it's not on the selvage. See those dotted lines? We don't want those. But we do want this fabric to lay straight against the grain. What that means is when we lay this bib down like this, have that straight line level with the edge you should try and get them straight and that gives you a stronger finish at the end of the um at the end of the make a lot of people just put the pattern pieces anywhere you you won't get a as good finish and you end up having a very twisted um finish as well okay and then we just cut that out so use pinking shears, use regular scissors, use a rotary cutter, use whatever you've got to make sure you've got nice clean lines. Let's cut another piece out. Now the same rule applies with cutting on the grain. You really need to be cutting your fabric like this. But as we've only got what we've got, I'm going to cut this way so I'm keeping that side actually on the grain right there we go so I've got my main fabric and the towel so you can sit this either way and because this is a cotton fabric both sides are a cotton fabric it's going to be lovely and absorbed. So that's the edge of the towel. So that's where I cut the bib. If I pull on this, can you see how it stretches? It stretches really, really easily like that. If I pull on this side, 
there's no stretch and no stretch there. I mean, there's a little bit, but not really. But now can you see, if I sit this back straight, can you see the warp I have created by pulling on it like that? So when you sew this fabric now, when you sew, and it doesn't matter if I had put the bib along the straight grain, I'd still end up with two diagonal lines. If you, um, if you stretch your fabric as you sew, when you finish sewing, what will happen is you end up with warp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of pins in there. Make sure it all matches up first before I do that. We're going to sew all the way round, but we need to turn it through. So I need a turning hole on this, which means I need to mark a couple of placements. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have it along the main bib section there. I'm not going to do it on the neckline. This is goes around the neck. I'm just about 10 centimetres will be fine. So just like we did on the template, I'm drawing a one centimetre seam allowance around the edge of the bib. And that's my sewing line, just like we did originally. And this is going to be the size of the bib when it's finished. This will also mark for me those pivot points. So see that corner there, that mark there will be where I turn the fabric in the machine. Get that needle in to the start point, then put your press foot down, sew a few stitches. So I did three stitches there and hold the reverse button down because it's a spring so it will shoot back up. Okay, I think I did four back didn't I? And we'll go up to the pivot point. So there's the pivot point. Use your hand wheel to put the needle right in. Lift up your press foot and swivel the whole thing round. And let's get that back down. So now we're going to go all the way along the neckline. Just hold the fabric. You're sort of making sure it doesn't wobble. You're not pulling it and pushing it through. The feed dog's job is to do that. Okay, so needle in, not quite there yet, so I'm going to do one more stitch, like that, and I think we're there. Oh, no, one more. That must be it, yeah. Right, all the way down, don't pull, don't stretch, even though this is not on the stretch, this one, still don't want to stretch. And can you see how having the pins right out the way, there's no interfering. I don't have to keep stop starting. I'm going off the line a little bit there. Back to the pivot point, needle all the way down, swivel, and then we're heading towards the finish there. Take that out. Needle in, reverse. So I did three stitches back and three stitches forward. Needle up and get that hook to the top. So as soon as you know that hook's at the top, you know it's safe to pull your fabric out. Press the foot up and pull that fabric out. I'll go all the way to the top myself. And then just snip those threads away. Move your pins. That fabric has got to fold into that triangular area. So we don't have that much space for all of that fabric. So we need to trim some of it away. You might find it's easy to do it on that side because I can see the blue on that side. And I can trim right to that corner. And I can take some of this bulk away as well. 
It's got to all get into that tiny space. Like that. And that should work. I'm going to take a little bit more there. Do the same on the other corners. And then we're going to flip this whole thing. Can't get rid of that thread. Flip the whole thing through. So go to the furthest corner. So like a pair of socks, just pull it all up, draw it all up to the opening and pull that corner through and look at that, bright and colourful. All right, so you need to give this a press now, so you need to get some eye, the iron on it and get these corners all sticking out and just give it a press. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of snaps on the back for baby. All right, so that's been pressed down. Now on your machine, you have an extra springy thrust on the foot. What that does is when you've got really thick fabric like this, you can hold it up a little bit and move to position. All right, make sure those threads are to the back. Lift that up. And we're going to start further in. We're not starting right in the corner. And we'll come and meet that point later. All right. Lock your stitches. Don't pull anything. We're still in that vulnerable state where if we pull on the edges, we might lose the shape. We'll put the needle in. So three stitches forward. Hold the reverse button. And three stitches back. Just make sure that's tucked in. Let the machine do the pulling. You don't need to pull anything. I'm just making sure it doesn't roll over. And when I get to where I think is the pivot point, I'm going to just Lift up the press foot and swivel round. So make sure your needle's in. Now, if you get to that point where you find that you're going uphill like that, that could be tricky on some machines. That's really tricky. So a good thing to do is grab a bit of fabric of the kind you're using. Lift up the press foot. We've still got the needle in there and put your press foot down and that levels the foot out. Easy. <laughs> right, so where we think the pivot point is, needle in and pivot all the way round. There we go. Hopefully it matches up with the line that you had before. Lock those stitches. And then, so when you're finished, make sure this hook is right at the top, like that. And then we can remove the fabric. And that's it, that really is as easy as that. And there's your baby bib. We just need to put some fastenings on that. We'll do that in a minute. Now I managed to get these. Decide where I need this to sit. So it clips in nicely like that. And I'm gonna place it there. So the silver's got to be up there. all in position and it snaps and there we go just put a little away 